What is Scrum? Like Agile, it depends on who you ask, which means that no matter what I say in this video, someone's going to disagree. So feel free to let me have it in the comments. Scrum.org says that Scrum is a simple framework for effective team collaboration on complex projects. It goes on to say that Scrum is not a methodology because it's flexible, but that you aren't doing Scrum if you modify it in any way. Of course, this sounds suspiciously like a methodology. I'm not pointing this out to criticize Scrum, but it's important to recognize that Scrum means very different things to different people. And the words framework and methodology also get used in a variety of different ways, so expect some ambiguity in what labels apply to Scrum, even if you're meticulous about defining your terms. Fortunately, looking at what Scrum actually is tends to be a whole lot easier than classifying it, so let's start there. First, it's important to note that Scrum rests on three pillars, transparency, inspection, and adaptation. These are important because they really help provide much greater context to the other parts of Scrum. You'll see them present as we look at Scrum's primary components, roles, events, and artifacts. More recently, Scrum has added values as well, but those aren't part of this video. Scrum defines specific roles. There's a product owner, Hello. a scrum master, Hi. and a development team. Each role has different responsibilities, but at a high level, the product owner is responsible for defining and sequencing the work that is to be done. The scrum master keeps things organized and helps remove impediments that could slow down the development team. And the development team does the work. This could be developing software or other types of work. Scrum also defines a number of events. First, there is the sprint. The sprint is a time-boxed, fixed-length iteration, typically two weeks in length, but no more than four weeks. Whatever length of iteration is chosen, the team sticks with it. It doesn't vary from iteration to iteration. The whole team collaboratively defines a scope of work to achieve a goal or business objective that's valuable to the product owner, and then makes their best effort to complete that body of work during the sprint. They may succeed or fail to complete all the work, but the sprint cadence remains the same either way. Unfinished work can be assigned to the next sprint if it's still valuable to the product owner. In some teams, the sprint may be referred to as an increment. For example, a consultant working with Verizon quickly discovered that using the term sprint didn't go over very well. I doubt if a scrum trainer would last very long trying to get everyone at sprint to refer to iterations as Verizons. Sprint planning and I'm back to talking about the iteration, not the telecommunication company. So sprint iteration planning is where the team defines the work and the goal they want to achieve in the upcoming sprint. This is a collaborative effort and involves the whole team having discussions about what has a valuable return on investment and what is possible to actually accomplish within the bounds of the sprint. Now let's look at the daily scrum. This is a daily 15-minute time-boxed meeting for the team to coordinate their work toward achieving the sprint goal. This is often called the daily stand-up, as many teams have found standing helps achieve the time box of 15 minutes, keep everyone from falling asleep, and off their phones and computers. Some teams go around and have each person say what they did yesterday, what they plan to do today, and if they have any impediments. Regardless of what methods used, the Scrum provides a daily touchpoint to achieve transparency and to quickly adapt to changes and in new information. I usually recommend that teams trying to follow Agile principles refer to this meeting as the daily face-to-face -face meeting because it helps keep everyone focused on the Agile principle of face-to-face -face communication. This is probably a good point to talk about where the term Scrum comes from. In rugby, a scrummage is a way to restart the play, where players pack tightly together and lock heads with the opposing team, forming a tunnel between the two sides. They then attempt to gain possession of the football as it's thrown through the tunnel. It's somewhat analogous to a jump ball in basketball. The scrum meeting is where everyone comes together in order to start things up again, but without the rugby aspect of locking heads and then trying to tackle the competition. But enough about sports. Scrum also has an event called the Sprint Review. This is a collaborative meeting to show what was accomplished during the sprint and get feedback on the work shown to stakeholders. With software, this includes some type of demo, but this isn't a polished Steve Jobs style presentation. The goal is to provide true transparency on what has been done. 
as people inspect what was accomplished, they provide feedback that can be used to adapt to the way work is done in the next sprint to provide the best return on investment possible. The last event to discuss is the sprint retrospective. This meeting is a chance for the team to reflect on how things have gone and how they can be improved. This event is based on the inspection and adaptation pillars mentioned earlier. For teams following Agile, this event is one of the ways teams follow the principle that says they should reflect on how to become more effective and adjust accordingly. So that is the five events, the sprint, sprint planning, daily scrum, sprint review, and sprint retrospective. Now let's look at the artifacts from Scrum. These are the product backlog, the sprint backlog, and the increment. The product backlog is a list of things that the product owner wants or thinks they may want. In software, this usually is an ordered list of features with the things the product owner sees as producing greater return on investment at the top of the list. The product backlog is the source for the sprint backlog, which is the set of items that have been selected for the current sprint. The sprint backlog is populated at sprint planning, and it helps keep the team focused on just what is needed for the current sprint without the added noise of everything in the full product backlog. The sprint backlog provides a great deal of transparency in understanding the progress being made toward the current sprint goal. The last artifact is the increment. The increment is the thing that is actually delivered. For example, it might be a new release of the software with all the new features that were completed in the sprint. This increment should be something that is potentially shippable or deployable. This means it needs to fully meet the definition of done with all the proper testing and cleanup that would be necessary to start getting a return on investment from it. So what does this look like altogether? The simplest way to think of Scrum is as two loops. The outer loop is the two-week iteration with the planning, review, or demo, and retrospective occurring on a cadence of every two weeks. Each iteration is inspected, and the next one is adapted to try to make it just a little bit better. Within this two-week loop is a 24-hour loop that starts with the daily scrum meeting and is also focused on providing transparency so the work done tomorrow is adapted to make improvements based on what we've learned today. So there you have a good high-level overview of scrum. A subsequent video will answer frequently asked questions about Scrum, so look for it if you're interested. I hope you found it useful. Please let me know in the comments what you liked and if there's anything I can do better in the next video. Each video I make has its own cycle where I take the feedback and try to improve for the next time, so comments are very appreciated. Also, I have a book available called Starting Agile. If you follow the link in the description, you can get instructions on how to get the book in whatever electronic format you prefer.